Game number one between Elves against Isengard, Matthias Mirix against Mr. Smoker on the map. Planes of Linden boys is all about to begin. Mustafa, welcome to the stream. Thank you guys for being here. Alright, so both players are pre-picking the factions. Uh, Mr. Smog, I was expecting him, to be honest, to pick random instead, but it's a world championship with a gigantic cash prize, and you wanna do your best. And even if that, if that means that you have to pick a faction to counter your opponent, to win those games, to reach the finals, to win the tournament. At the top side, we have the blue Elven player Matthias Mirix, and his opponent is the orange Isengard player Mr. Smog. Um, yeah, I mean, Elves against Isengard, good against evil. We have seen this actually in the good against evil tournament quite a lot. We were hosting a couple of months ago. Um, but not between those two players. Two Malon trees into the Varaks. We have two furnaces into the Uruk pit from the Isengard player, Mr. Smok on the other side. Rallying Cole was picked and Smok is gonna potentially pick the Warchant because, you know, that's like happening 95.5% of all games, especially when you are not starting with the work pit. Because with the work pit you can also go for the Kreebane, since your work packs, work riders, they're gonna have whole ability, which is replacing the war chant completely. But since he is starting with the Uruk pit, I'm pretty certain that he's gonna start with the war chant. Alright, um, Varax, Lorien, Warriors are on their way. And we're gonna have, uh, actually Pikemen start from Mr. Smog. So he might go for the creep at the bottom right side. I think that's a great idea actually against elves, uh, you know, in any matchup pretty much, because from the inn you are able to make those black orcs, they are cheaper than your Urukai, are dealing a lot of damage, being tankier than normal orcs, as, uh, you know, obviously, they cost 250 each. And you can also, you know, you have a potential second barracks at the bottom right side, and you can actually keep using that to pressure this area of the map. Alright, pikemen, but it looks like you wanna go for this creep here. That's the waypoint from those pikemen. The second unit are gonna be those Urukai. So I think the plan from Mr. Smok is gonna be creep the work layer, get a level 2 pikemen, get the treasure, get some experience in power points. Group with the Urukai later on and go for a massive push. We know uh, Urukai and those, you know, Uruk pikemen, they are very, very strong. They have a lot of armor and really hard to take them down. But the Lorian warriors are coming from Matthew Smirk. He's gonna get archers now on the field. More of them are on the way. So he's gonna be ready to defend as he's building up his second barracks. Rallying Cole was used and he's committing to that furnace. And there is no protection at all. It looks like Smok is just gonna give up this furnace here. But doesn't demolish it. Why? Because he's, he needs to wait for the crossbow man. If he demolishes that fast, he might even lose the second one. To just get as much time as possible, he was not demolishing it. Yeah, those Lorian Warriors are almost level 2 now, and the Alvin player Matthew Smirk was able to get some experience and power points. No but he might even be still able, yeah, he's gonna be able to take down the second furnace as well. What a great start into the series from the Alvin player Matthew Smirk's boys. That's incredible. And on the other side, he has also archers to defend himself. Lorian Warriors are gonna come out from the second barracks. He has archers here creeping the trolley at the same time. And with that being said, it looks like he's prepared for this attack from Mr. Smog. I mean, Warchan was used now. Let's see how much damage he will be able to deal. And look those Lorian warriors, ladies and gentlemen. Matthew Smirix is not done yet. He's all about to take down the third one. He's microing around while he's defending himself very nicely. This Malone tree is still on the field, building a wall hub to block this pathway. And look at this, he's surrounding Mr. Smog. Mr. Smog is being in a very, very rough situation. And yes, those Lorian warriors, they were able to take down three out of three furnaces from Mr. Smog, boys. That's amazing from the United Kingdom player, Matthias Merricks in the game number one. Three power points collected by Matthias and we have two power points collected by Mr. Smog. He couldn't manage to take, he was able to take one Malon tree with two units, <laughs> while uh, the one Lorian warrior from Matthias Mirk was able to take down all three furnaces from Mr. Smog. That's gonna hurt him big time later on, because those Malon trees, this one in the back and this one in the front, are gonna hit level 2 pretty soon, unlike the furnaces from Mr. Smog. Mr. Smog has to go for the creep now, and it looks like he was forcing his opponent to cancel or to stop creeping the tro uh, troll layer. The only good f thing for Mr. Smog was actually that he was creeping this work layer, so he gets some money from that, which he needs. 
Isengard gets a lot of money later on, but to be honest, Isengard needs the money because his units are very expensive. And Matthias is preparing himself for another attack. Rallying Call is gonna be available faster than the Warchant, so he can make this, he can use this for his advantage. No heroes just yet on the field. Creep secured by Mr. Smog, he's gonna capture this in now. And Elven players moving forward. A lot of archers, pikemen and Lorien warriors. And for me it doesn't look like Mr. Smog is ready to defend such an attack. But we shall see. Uh, only one Uruk pet, so he won't be able to keep up with the spam. He has the main army around the top right side. Um, which means they won't be ready to defend such an attack. Luckily, however, for Mr. Smog, there are not many units from Matthew Smirk's rights now that can take down the structures, but they can always place themselves in front of the Uruk pit. With that being said, the units, as they come out, they will be taken down in a second and a half. Rallying call, commitment on the Uruk pit, cross promenade coming out, but Smog has to retreat. He chooses not to. He's gonna get some black orcs from the inn at the bottom right side. He can't fight this army, there is no way. There are too many archers and they are being buffed from the rallying call. The Uruk pit is getting targeted and is already at around 50% HP. Smog has to deal damage in return with pikemen, urukai and crossbowmen. He will be able to take down this Malon tree, but he might lose much more than that on the other side of the map. Heal will be used from Matthew's Mirix. The Uruk pit is down, the furnace is down, but Matthew's is not done yet. The Malon tree has been taken down, but you know, he will be forced potentially to use Warchan defensively, kinda. He used it offensively though. He's also using Creebane here, which means they're gonna get killed from those archers if Matthias really needs that and wants that. The Uruk pit is down. He can still make units from this in at the bottom right side, but the pressure is real. He has still so many units around. That's impressive how the game number one goes on for Matthias Mirix in the third game series in his group stage against Mr. Smok. And again, Mr. Smok and Matthias are sitting right now on the exact same point. They are both they were both able to win two out of three, uh, two out of two series so far, and whoever wins this series is gonna be the champion of the group, and it's gonna be very important later on in the round of 16 because the winner of a group has to play against the second place from another group. Charco uh, is on the field. We know Charco is very effective against clumped units. Archers are not dealing too much damage to him, but there are still some pikemen around from Matthew's Mirix. You gotta be careful. He hits level 2, the Svernis is gonna be taken down as well. In the meantime, Matty was also able to defend himself. Keeping this level 2 Malon tree alive is very important. We have right now 525 command points available for Matty's Merrick. 6 power points almost collected. Has still massive army around this area after heal and rallying call. On the other side, Mr. Smog has 350 command points only. Doesn't have money, his command points capped. The only good thing for him is on the field, uh, on the field is Sharku who can't approach the army before killing those pikemen. Three power points collected, he needs devastation, he needs a wonder at this, at this moment. He needs some shenanigans to happen in his favor to turn this game around. Charku is doing a great job, he will be able to defend this attack, but we have now Glorfindel joining the battlefield from the Elven player Matthias Merix. And during all this time he's being untouched, building his advantage, 575 CP against 400 CP has more command points, more power points, as he's creeping the troll layer at the top left side. It, that's gonna mean we will have only this work layer on the right side left on the map Plains of Lindon in the game number one. Alright, Sakura Forest and Pots of Eisen are the potential other two maps we might be able to see. Depends if we're gonna see a game number three. This one is looking very good for now for Matthias Mirix. Uh, he's gonna make more arches, more units all the time. Maybe the best thing you need to do at this point is try to go for a siege really fast when you have an advantage like this. Because I would say if you make like more arches at this point and some pikemen, you should be good to go. And you have also Glorfindel on the field. And right now Mr. Smog doesn't have any pikemen around. That means Glorfindel can be very devastating. The builder here from Matthias is gonna be taken down. Unfortunately, he's trying to run for his life. Will he be able to get away? Yes, he will. Glorfindel is coming, trampling down those Urukai. It's level 2, level 3 will be the time for Glorfindel to shine. The Malon tree has been taken down, Sharku is level 4. This Malon tree is gonna go down as well. We have some units destroying the inn at the bottom right side from Matthias Mirix. 
Some black orcs manage to get to the top right side, but they will get killed from those Lorian archers. Both the barracks are still level 1, no stable on the field. On the other side, I see a work pit level 1, but he is buying the upgrade to level 2, and one Uruk pit only. There is a single level 2 furnace on the field from Mr. Smog. 10 power points collected, boys, from Matthias Mirix. He's gonna go for the mist, which means less damage output, less armor for the enemy units. Mr. Smock on the other side has to be careful with the builder from those peasants. He needs to run, he needs to disengage, but it looks like Mr. Smock is not paying attention and the build just in time. He needs devastation, I hope he's gonna go for it. He doesn't choose that something like Wildman of Dunland summon, which could help him maybe out of the current situation. But I think what he has, yeah, he's gonna go for the devastation, which is the right call in my opinion. He needs some money right now. Isengard units are very expensive. He can't afford to make any of these at this point. Look his money. He has 375 command points as well. Use the devastation as fast as you can. You can also use it later on on the ends, by the way, from the Elven player. They're gonna, it's gonna deal a lot of damage to the Elven player, Elven player's ends as well, as we know. And Smog doesn't care too much that he's being attacked all the time. And I think that's one of his main mistakes from the beginning of the game. That he didn't choose to defend with the Urukai. He went for an attack. But by the time he reached this area, Matthias Merix was already able and ready to defend. And losing 3 out of 3 furnaces to the 1 Lorian Warrior Battalion from Matthias Merix is very unfortunate for the world champion of 2019. 325 command points. We know Smok likes to fight until the end. He's a really a real warrior by the way. But this game is looking very bad for the player from Ukraine. He can't approach the army. Matty has answer to everything what Mr. Smok is getting on the field, boys. This is amazing. 250 command points, his command points gap. That's the only furnace he has left on the field. The pressure is real. Warcham must use actually offensively. The builder is gonna be able to get away. Glorfindel is almost level 5, has Blade of Purity available. Um, at this point, when you have you know Blade of Purity with Glorfindel, you can always use the What happened? Did he lose the Glorfindel to the Pikeman? I think he did. Yes, he did lose the lose his hero to the Pikeman around this area. They are almost level 4. Well that's kinda unfortunate. But it's this being the case, unfortunately, you know what I'm saying? Oh, that's, you know, those kind of mistakes you can't, you know, you can't make at this point. He's gonna go for the ends. He needs to revive Glorfindel, who is gonna be very strong later on. Because you can always use the Blade of Purity, face tank the fortress, damage it big time. With the help of the ants, you can take it down really fast. We have 7 power points collected from Matthew Smirix. Mist is still available. He doesn't, has to, he doesn't have to use it right now. There is not much to kill. Beside this one battalion of pikemen and urukai. Lourdes is on the field from, uh, from Mr. Smog. 350 command points only. Devastation was helping out a lot. I mean, kind of investing the money he got into the Lourdes. Where is Sharku? Sharku is doing a great job defending. He's level 5 now. The ends are gonna be very hard to deal with right now for the Isengard player Mr. Smog. It looks like he has zero answer to that. Maybe make some lumber mills, spam lumber mill workers, because if you didn't know, I mean, I'm joking by the way, but that's not a joke now. If you didn't know, the lumber mill workers from those lumber mills are dealing a lot of damage, just like in the movies. Ooh, be careful here with this guy. Alright, Kribin will be used to debuff the enemy units. Lurtz is diving in using the carnage. Sharku is already a little bit low, but he can still try to re-engage on the army. The splash damage from Sharku, we have seen already so many times how impactful that can be. The pikes are in the back, so the arches in the front are not protected at all. The Kribane is still flying around. Sharku has to be careful though. Doesn't take too much damage from those archers right now. He can go in this clump maybe. Lourdes is diving in level 3. Sharku, we gotta keep an eye on this guy. Rylan Kovas used pikemen are damaging him. Will he be able to get away? That's the question. He's very low, he's very low, but he... Not even close and gets away with 1 HP left. But Lourdes... And Sharku are alive, that's all what Mr. Smog got right now. Nothing else is left as Glorfindel is returning on the field. We have an end now on the field as well. And he's gonna start sieging. Devastation is on cooldown, so it can't be used on this end. Which is not gonna one-shot the end, but dealing really significant amount of damage. Committing to that furnace, which is gonna be taken down really fast. And Smog doesn't have an answer. He doesn't have the army he needs. 
Because if you have an army with Isengard, I think you can defend yourself. Urukai in the front lane are uh, very tanky. Right now, the Elven player Matthew Smith doesn't have any calf units on the field. So Urukai to tank with the, with the Kreebane and the Warchant, so you can nullify the enemy leadership, debuff them, use Warchant on yourself. The crossbowman in the back could potentially do something. But at this point, um, he needs to take down this end really fast because he's already getting sieged. Warchant was used. It looks like um, Matis doesn't want to take this fight. He is retreating for now. We have some units coming from this area. We have 11 power points almost collected from Matthew's Mix. 775 command points available against 350. Smog didn't manage to get more than 350 command points in the past 10 minutes. Charku is almost full health again. He's gonna get attacked from this side as well. Follow me. And now the war the war is gonna be on cooldown. It's gonna be off soon on those units, and then he will have an advantage with his rallying call, with his mist, which is still available, which he can use for the commitment on the fortress. Mist is gonna be used now though. Okay, Sharku is diving in. So we need to keep an eye on Sharku, but Matty is paying attention. He doesn't let him go into the backline for free. He doesn't let him to take down his archers for free. The end and the army is moving forward. We have some units in the meantime in the backside as well. Yes, another end and gonna go for one more. So three ends potentially are gonna take down this, uh, this fortress very fast. The Vestation, however, is gonna be ready very soon. But again, it's not gonna be enough to one-shot this end. Charku is looking around this area, trying to pressure and take down this level 2 Malone 3. That's all he can do, he can't really approach this army at this point. Lorfindel is diving, diving in as well, Blade of Purity is almost available. And yeah, at this point he can just get this end also there. I'm, I'm actually curious if Mr. Smok is gonna use the Devastation on this end. Just to see how much damage it would actually deal. Wildman of Dunland is gonna be ready. But Warchan is on cooldown, so it looks like Mr. Smog, he wants to, yeah, he went, he didn't even use it on the end. He was using it on those trees around. Whiteman of Thunder and Kreebane. But the army is just too big to handle. And eagles are coming, boys. And it looks like Matthias Merix is gonna be able to win the game number one against the world champion of 2019. As elves against Isengard on the map plains of Lindon. Pretty impressive. And the start was amazing for the player from UK. He had such an upper hand and he was just able to snowball, to give up the pressure and never give time to breath to the Isengard player, Mr. Smog Boys. The game number two between Matthias Merix against Mr. Smog. On the map, Pots of Isen, the same matchup, Elves against Isengard once again. It's all about to begin. Matthias Merix has the upper hand. He was able to win on the map Plains of Lindon, the game number one. Because of the incredible start into the game. And against good and experienced players, you don't want to start from behind. Because they know how to snowball the lead. They know how to not throw the lead. And they know how to use that lead for their advantage to win the games. On the left side, we have the orange Isengard player Mr. Smok against the blue album player Matthias Mriggs. Two Malone trees are coming up and two furnaces. Let's see. I mean, Smok has to just make sure that his early game was, is a little bit better. The early game from Smok in the previous game was a really big mistake in my opinion. It was also really incredible from Matthias Mriggs to be able to kill all those three furnaces with this one Lorien warrior battalion he got on the field. This time he's building up three Malone trees. No early barracks. He might go for the stable potentially. Let's see what is gonna be his choice. Alex shall not welcome. And Smok is building the third furnace and he will have to Uruk put advantage. So the stable is coming up for Matthias Mirx. That's nice. That's something different from the playstyle of the last game. Which will make it hard for Mr. Smok to predict. Smok is gonna start luckily with those pikemen. I think the plan is simple. He's gonna go for the creep again. He didn't set any waypoints just yet though from this Uruk pit. He might also go for a push. That's also something we have seen a couple of times. In this situation it would be a great choice from Mr. Smog to use the pikeman for a push. Because the stable from... Uh, from... Metis Merc is gonna be 
Uh, the, the, I mean, the Lancers are gonna be a bit later on the field, so the Pikemen, they can be very impactful. And he won't have any counter to those Pikemen yet. With that being said, this one Pikeman Battalion from Mr. Smog could potentially be able to kill all those three, if not only two, um, Malon trees from Matty's Mercs. Who's gonna go for the, for the Barracks now? Is he gonna demolish the stable after the Lancer Battalion? I think that's gonna be potentially the case, let's see. He might also just try to keep it because he was building three uh, Malon trees first, not two. And because of the positioning of the stable, I mean, that does actually make sense that he's not gonna demolish it. Normally, if you demolish the stable, you build it a bit more in the front. But since he wanted to protect the Malon tree with that, makes sense. So, Smok is gonna go for the creep at the bottom right side. The second unit from Smok, however, are gonna be crossbowmen. Urukai crossbowmen. And they are both not a great choice against the Lancers. Smok has to cancel this now after seeing the, the Lancers here. Just cancel because the crossbowmen, they're not gonna do anything for you. They're gonna be a free food for the Lancers of Matthew's Mercs. The damage output is crazy with the rallying call and the furnace is gonna get bursted down. Smoke on the other side is gonna do almost the same thing what he did in the previous game. He's gonna go for the push with Urukai and Pikeman. Which can work a bit you know, much better in this game because right now Matthias doesn't have any arches around. And he has pikemen, so they don't need to be worried about those lancers at this point. Warcham will be used offensively. Crossbowmen are getting trampled down. That's what I meant before. It's a free food. And they're gonna hit level... Oh, but the pikemen! Oh my! Unlucky! He almost lost the entire battalion. He needs to retreat now. The barracks is gonna be taken down. The builder from Metismirk has been taken down as well. That's a massive push from Mr. Smog Boys. That's a massive push. He has zero archers on the field. Zero pikemen on the field. The only infantry unit he got on the field are those Lorien warriors. The lancers, they are retreating. One of them is very low and he has no healing opportunity right now. The Lorien warriors are getting killed as well. And the attack from Mr. Smog is gonna continue. And because the pikemen, those lancers, they can't approach them. And more of them are coming. That means Smog is gonna keep up the pressure all the time. In the game number two... On the map, Forts of Eisen. 3 power points almost collected, 350 command points available. 350 command points for the Elven player Matthew's Mercs, and he has 2 power points collected. The Malone tree is gonna be taken down. And yeah, even though I gotta say the Lancer choice from Matthew's was a great choice, because he was able to kill those crossbowmen, he was able to take down one of those furnaces, but the set, you know, but I think the Lorien Warriors, they were really, really delayed, and then no archers at all to defend yourself. And he didn't see it coming because Smog was moving through the bot side, so he didn't see Mr. Smog coming. We have now Sharko on the field, gonna be a great choice against those Lancers, you can always keep chasing them down. There is a Malon tree from Matty Smirks at the top right side. Alright. We have now Haldir joining the fight, who's gonna be helpful. The Barax is building up again, but right now he has like 3 units from Lorien Warriors, and that's all he got from the Barax. Uh, Haldir has to be careful, he can commit and clump. Clumping against heroes is very useful by the way. You can deal massive amount of damage and until they have, until they respond, you might be able to burst them down, especially a Haldir level 1. is very squishy. Um, Sharku is being used offensively, so he's gonna commit to this level 1 Malon tree. Trying to get archers on the field, Malon tree is gonna get bursted down. But uh, looks like Smog doesn't have too much protection right now. And he will lose one of those furnaces. And he keeps the pressure all the time. And now after seeing Sharko, he needs to also make some pikemen. I did a sitting level 2. He's gonna kind of suicide with those units to take down this level almost 2 Malon tree. Which is gonna be huge and I think he's gonna be able to do that. Lancers are forced to retreat. And he was able to kill the Vel. So there is no killing again for right now for Matthias Mirix. Archs are on the way, but they're gonna get trampled down from Sharku. Sharku is taking them down one by one. Very well done. He's almost level 4 already. Which is impressive. Luckily for Matthias Mirix, both his lances are still remaining on the field. But one of them is very low. Smok is gonna go for the creep at the left side of the river. He has right now a massive advantage. 450 command points for the orange Isengard player on the left side. 6 power points collected. On the other side, 4 power points for Matthew's Mirix, 300 command points available only. 
The smoke can always go for the cave pads if he wants to. Sharku is gonna be used for the map control. Haldir is creeping the Vorkle at the right side of the river. The Lancers are going for an attack once again. The second Urukvid is coming up this time. As Smog was able to get this Warclayer with that, also the second one. He was early on creeping this one at the bottom right side. He might be able to contest this. There are only Pikemen and Haldir. That's not gonna be able to stop those um, Urukai and Pikemen. Sharku slowly but surely taking down the Smalon tree. Almost got an entire level from that. This furnace has been taken down. Uh, Smog has to make sure to keep some pikemen around this area to just protect those furnaces. Because Matty is doing a great job harassing those furnaces and trying to keep Mr. Smog busy. Which is very important. As you try to defend yourself, I think it's very important to try to deal as much damage in the, at the same time. Because defending all alone is not gonna make you win your games. Pressure is very important. Sharku, nearly level 5. Elven players actually being able to push him back now a little bit, but Smog has still the advantage. I would like to see Lourdes right now. Let's see the money from Isengard. He has no money, so he might go for the Lourdes already. But again, you know, 525 command points, he's making Urukai and Pikeman at the same time. Both of them are costing 400 each. They are very expensive. And try to keep spamming them all the time. Very challenging. Nice trample. But they are being buffed, so they don't take too much damage, actually. No, no, well, still, Sharku is gonna be able to take down this Malon tree. And I think he's gonna go for a summon. Riding Cole was used defensively. Two archers, Haldir, one pikeman, and one and a half lancer battalion. The Malon tree is going down. The lancers, they gotta be careful. Nice micro, just pressing S in the, at the right time to not trample them down or in, into them. Which would mean that you would lose every single lancer. And Smok is going for the Devastation, which will be used immediately. I think he's gonna use the money for Lourdes, yes, that's gonna be the case. Lourdes is gonna be on the field soon. Nice one from Sharku, hitting like an absolute truck. But he needs to disengage now as the pikemen are coming. Will be able to get away. Level 3.5 for Haldir. Level 5 is gonna be very important because of the leadership. Because right now, Smok didn't go for the cave pads. With that being said, you have no way of negating the enemy's leadership. Which might be a problem later on, but again, you know, Smog can always go for the Kribin later on. Yes, now more Urukai and Pikemen coming. Doesn't make any crossbow man, so keep spamming those Urukai with those Pikemen. I think Warc Riders could be a great choice at this point. Because you have a great sports hero like Sharku, who is level 5, has the leadership for the Warc Riders. Upgrades can be always a great choice for the Isengard units. But he needs to also try to make sure uh, to expand at the same time. Lourdes is gonna be very impactful later on. Once he's level 2 with the Carnage, with the level 4 with the Cripple, and level 5 with the Leadership. 300 command points only for Matthias Merrick, so he's struggling a lot, trying to get some money from the creep at the top right side. The Smallon tree is gonna be taken down, and Smog just does that what Mr. S uh, what um, Matthias Merrick was doing to him in the previous game. Keeps up the pressure all the time. The Builder, by the way, has been taken down. Uh, that might be a bad fight to take for Matthias. I mean, yes, he has archers in the background, but there are too many units. And they are very tanky, so he needs to be very careful. The Lancers, they can't approach the army anyway. There is a well now, I think. Yeah, there is a well, so they were, they were able to heal up. Luckily for Matthias Mirix, he, uh, he didn't lose any of those Lancers just yet. He made only two. And those two are still remaining on the field. But Sharku is gonna be very effective against them. Ooh! Hit them! Oh my god, he cancelled so many auto attacks. Cancelled so many auto attacks. He hits so hard, by the way, this guy. But the furnace has been taken down. Level 6 almost. Um, Isengard is going for the attack. Warchant is available now. So he's gonna definitely commit and take down, try to take down those two Malon trees here. 675 command points. He's getting also units from the bot side, pressuring this area of the map. Warchan will be used now. Oh, he was also going for the vision of Palancia, and every Lancer is running it down. And Matty is gonna call it GG. And this series is gonna be even once again. And we're gonna jump right into the deciding game, the tiebreaker in the best of three. The game number three will be played on the map Sakura Forest 2.
All right, boys, the final game, the game number three on the map Sakura Forest. We're gonna have the same matchup, and Lourdes is going nuts, by the way, in the meantime. That's like another five. We just gifted five before. That's in total 10 gifted subs to me. Lourdes, subs. thank you so Watch much. And Brown Bear is coming in clutch as well. Holy moly. What is going on today, boys? <laughs> on the bottom right side, we have the blue Elven player Matthew Smirks and his the ally, his opponent at the top left side subs. is the Orange Isengard player Mr. Smog. That's the game number three. That's the final game in the best of three series. This series, this game is gonna decide who is gonna be the number one in the group stage. Being number one or number two means a lot, by the way. All right. So, Elves against Isengard three times in a row. Good against Evil. The first game was won by Matthew Smirks. On the map Plains of Lindon, the second game was won by Mr. Smog on Falls of Eisen. Now the third and the last game is being played on Sakura Forest 2. Pretty damn good. Alright. So three Malon trees and a barracks. He's gonna go for the Lorian Warriors just like in the in the game number one, which was working out very nicely. On the other side we have Smog. Uruk Pit this time starting with the Urukai, not Pikeman. Which is kind of interesting because normally he starts with the pikeman um, and goes for a creep. I mean, that was the case at least in the games before. And that is a creep you can take here at the left side of the river. And also this one, which is gonna be potentially uncontested. Lorian warriors are joining the fight. There is a builder building another Malon tree from the album player Matthew Smirks. And yeah, it's a, it's a great start into the game once again. Game number three. I mean, so far, the, the first game was lasting a little bit longer, but the games were kind of very short. And that's the whole reason, you know. I think when you are, when we are seeing a game between two experienced players, when they do know what they are doing, they will snowball on your mistake and they will not give you the chance to come back. So, I think we're gonna have either series, you know, between those two, between two great players, which is gonna be finished within the first 15 minutes, or series that can last over an hour. <laughs> I think there is no middle point, pretty much. Was the first game close? No, the first game was actually very in favor from Matthew Smirix because he was having a fantastic start with the Lorian Warriors. He was able to kill three out of three furnaces. And then from this moment on, it snowballed so hard in his, actually, in his favor, actually. Right, uh, uh, Warcham was used, but this time, unlike the games before, uh, Matty is trying or deciding to defend. The commitment to the Malon tree, it's gonna be close, but Smok is gonna be able to take it down. That's very good, actually. The only good, fun uh, good thing here for Matty's Merc is that he was defending without the rallying call. That means he will have now the buff advantage, which can mean a lot. Um, because he has double barracks now, has archers, three battalions and one battalion of Lorian warriors, now he can go for a counter-attack. But he keeps making more archers and I think that's gonna be a problem later on when it comes to take down those structures, you don't have damage output, if this makes sense. Okay. In the meantime, he's creeping at the very left side on the map Sakura Forest. It's one of the most, and I think if it's the most recent map in the 1v1s. Uh, this map wasn't existing in the tournaments before. That's not true. You have seen this actually on the on the faction champion tournament, but it was definitely not existing in the World Championship 2019. Okay, Urukai are moving forward this time from the bottom left side, but attack from Meti is gonna happen now. Crossbow man, they gotta disengage. Luckily again for Mr. Smug, is that he has only one Lorian Ar Lorian warrior battalion, and that's the only unit that can deal damage to the structures. But on the bright side, however, for uh, Matthew's Mirix, he's camping right in front of the Uruk pit and he will be able to snipe them down as soon as they come out of the pit. And he's using those trees to get stealthed, which is a nightmare for the Isengard player to deal with. What you can potentially do in this matchup as Isengard is by the upgrade on the fortress. But the Warc Riders are coming in class just in time! I didn't even see the Warc Pit level 2, guys. What a... It's hiding behind the trees. Very well done here from Mr. Smog. But look, even the Warc Riders, they are getting killed because of the clump. They are getting slowed down. And yes! Matthew Smirix, ladies and gentlemen, will be able to take down those Warc Riders with archers exclusively. No pikemen at all. And he couldn't get the flank damage off he was looking for. And as they were really 
big time clumped, the war riders they got slowed down. And then you are stuck in between the army from your opponent. You don't deal damage in the meantime, but they are damage they are dealing damage to you. That's why you need to make sure to not trample straight into the middle. You want to go for like a flank damage so you can go all this way around. You know what I'm saying, right? Like this, for example. It's a bad fight to take for the Alvin player or the Vork Riders. Oh, nice one. Nice catch here from Mr. Smog. Almost taking down every single one of these archers. Going now for a counter attack. We have right now Alvin player sitting on 400 command points. Double barracks available and no stable. 5 power points collected after rallying coal. On the other side, we have 450 command points, so it's equal right now in, in terms of command points. He went for the war chant and uh, keef bats, 1 power point collected afterwards. So, both in terms of power points and command points, it's 100% even right now. The war chant will be used offensively, and that's one of the differences. Mattis Mirk's rallying coal, his buff isn't ready just yet. Malone Tree is getting bursted down. Heal is available though from Matisse. He can go for the Kribin as well, which will be used now. I was for a second thinking that this is Sharku, by the way, but there was only one Wark alive. <laughs> My bad. Two power points collected. The pressure is real. Luckily, Matty has so many archers around, and they were just able to kill the Keef Bats. As more reinforcements are coming from Mr. Smog, that might be a bad fight to take because there are just too many archers on the field. So you will definitely need some more Vark Riders or like Sharku was doing a great job in the games before. Lourdes can be always a great and solid choice. Or you can always make some siege weapons. But I think siege weapon wise, um, Isengard's Ballistas are not very great against enemy units. Unlike for example the Moro Catapults, the, the Dwarven Catapults, the Trebuchets from the Men of the West faction. The, the Ballistas, mm, I don't, I'm not sporting them that much. I don't like them that much. Nice map control fights here. The Builder has to be careful from Matthew's Mirks. There is a huge army, mainly based on archers. The Builder is gonna get killed. He's too far away from home. I mean, he's using a position in which uh, the Warcraters need a lot of time to take him down. But he's gonna die, he's gonna die regardless. The war creep is gonna be secured by the Isengard's player as well. That's the that's the third. Uh, no, that's the second war player he was securing. He was already creeping this one at the left side, and now this one at the right side of the river. Um, Matty has to be a bit uh, a bit careful because he has right now his army being off position. But again, he has still many units on the field, and he can always make a stage over here for defensive purposes. So he has some leadership for the units. And they will deal much more damage and they will be also much more tankier now going for the map control securing the creep at the left side of the river which is i mean at this point you want to take as much as you can and it looks like that was also the last creep remaining on the field in the map sakura forest work riders are using the whole ability to commit him to that level two malon tree and they will be able to take it down that's huge Isengard is preparing for attack with more units. Alvin player is disengaging. Going for a massive attack. Warchan is on cooldown. Rallying call is available. He has 6 power points almost collected. Uh, Alvin player's first attack actually with... Uh, I mean, that's the second attack technically, but the first one was only with one Dorian warrior. This time he has also pikemen around. So with that he might be able to take down some of those furnaces. And he needs to do that. Smok is just gonna demolish that, trying to not give him any power points, any command po uh, any power points in experience, because uh, Alvin player will try to get the power points he needs for the enshrouding mist, which is gonna make the army against army fight much more in the favor of the Alvin player. Uh, BSG Blackbe Blackbeard, welcome to the stream and thank you so much for the follow. All right. There's a huge army, Rallying Call was used, and Smog doesn't want to take the fight just yet. So he's retreating all the way back to his fortress. During all this time, there is a Urukai at the bottom right side, looking for those uh, Malon trees. And again, there is zero protection on the field right now. Matisse is moving out with all his army. But now it would be a mistake to commit, because Rallying Call just turns off. This Malon tree is gonna go down. 
5 power points collected, 350 command points will be available after losing this Malon tree. 400 because he was building another one, I think, around somewhere else. Um, on the other side, we have almost 9 power points collected. Lourdes is on the fields now. Again, a massive army from Mr. Smog. But I, we will definitely see a massive battle. And I can't tell you who will win that fight. Uh, it looks like that Smog actually lost every single Warcrider beside him because I can't see them on the field anymore. I don't see any Warcriders anymore on the field. And I think he lost them. Yeah, he lost them. Which is kind of unfortunate. This way, um, the Alvin player doesn't need to be scared anymore for his archers. Your Findle is on the field, level 1. 9 power points collected. I'm curious if Mr. Smog gonna go for the Devastation once again, like in the previous game with the Spellbook after collecting 10 power points, or if he's gonna go for the Wildman of Tunnel and summon. Which can be good against the Alvin army right now, because you can just summon it on top of the Alvin archers and try to deal uh, as much damage as you possibly can. Alright, uh, Rallying Call is on cooldown, and surprisingly, Matty doesn't build a statue around this area. 10 power points collected, and yes, he's gonna go for the Wildman of Tunnel. He's gonna summon them on top of the army. Kribin is also being used. Matty has to disengage. This is a fight which is looking very good for the Isengard player, Mr. Smog, who was 1-0 behind, managed to win the second game. And this game is also looking very good for the Isengard player Mr. Smog, who is our world, who was our world champion in 2019. And Brown Bear once again is coming in clutch with five gifted subs. That's ten today. Thank you so much, Brown Bear man. You are a monster. Appreciate that. And also Lords for the ten gifteds. I mean, I can't say enough thank you to Lukat Vulcan anyway, because he was dropping like HD. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for the support. Really means a lot to me. I love you, Chad. I love you too, man. <laughs> All right, this is looking very good for now for Mr. Smog. There is not much left on the field anymore for Matthew Smirks. Yes, he has some money, but he can't use the money right now. Glorfindel has to run for his life. He's not level three just yet. Lourdes is hunting him down. Can use the. You can just use the uh, vision of Palantir. He's gonna try to commit now to the fortress potentially, which is already a little bit damaged. Move Almost 9 power points collected once again. And Vulcan is coming in clutch with 94 biddies. 94 biddies. Appreciate that, Vulcan. Keepo. And thank you for the follows also, by the way, guys. Um, Yeah, this is the power of the world champion 2019. I mean, the mistake of him in the game number one made the game number one look like he's so behind in terms of skill level. But Smog is a man of focus. <laughs> it's like, it, it sounds like I'm describing a John Wick or something. But, you know, Matty did something many players couldn't do. He, he beat Mr. Smog in the first game. It, you know, it doesn't change anything about the group stage right now. It just... Puts Mr. Smog slightly over Matty Smirks right now, and he has now the chances, uh, the chance to finish off the group stage uh, with the num you know, being the number one. I'm just gonna show you after giving you guys the points. Um, Smog was able to win this one. So after the after the game now uh, between Smog against Matty Smirks in the group E, which is where is it? Matthew Smirks against Mr. Smog. Mr. Smog 2 1. He has the spot number 1, but Matty is gonna be in the number 2. And this one win is gonna matter later on potentially. And I was actually getting asked so many times Does it really change anything if you win one out of three games, and you, but you still end up losing the series? Yes, it does matter something. I'm just gonna show you what I mean in the, in the group A. You see, DJ Premier is the leader, even though Mustafa has more points. If you are wondering why, because DJ Premier was winning against King Mustafa. So the win here in the series means more than the one point. But if at the end of the day, the you know win-lose ratio of the number 3 and 4 potentially gonna be identical with the number 2, that might be the case. They have the same, same amount of set wins. 
and uh, but the, the points are different. The points are gonna decide. Anyways, that was um, that was Mr. Smog against Matthew Smrix on the best of three. Uh, congratulations to Mr. Smog getting one step closer to the round of 16. And I'm actually curious to see, guys. One second. Uh, the f winner of the group E has to fight against the Brown second in the group D. So if Smog seven. wins the group Water E, as, I mean, if he leaves the group with the first place, he has to play against the second of the group D, which right now is um, Black Knight. I mean, that's not decided at all. But if uh, you lose, I mean, if Mattis Mix would... Uh, not losing against Mr. Smoke right now, he would potentially be the number one in the group E, right? And that would mean the second of the group E is gonna fight against the first of the group e D. So the second, in, you know, potentially gonna be Mattis Mirix, just imagine for a second, has to fight against potentially Mei Shadow Facts in the very first round of the round of 16, boys.